children settle down. Open your notebooks. Get ready for today's grammar lesson. Now we're going to learn a bit more about diagramming sentences. And today we're going to focus on prepositional phrases. It's important to learn how to diagram sentences so that you can make sure that your subjects and your verbs agree with one another in number. One of the many reasons why learning to diagram sentences is so important. As we build upon today's lesson and yesterday's lesson, you will see more and more advantages to learning this valuable skill. Now, as we discussed yesterday, the basic components of most diagrammed sentences include the line in which all major parts of speech parts of the sentence appear, and a line that separates the subject from the predicate. Who remembers what we learned yesterday about subjects that have an article of some sort, either the or a or an. Do you remember what we learned? If we said a dog walks, the major word in the subject is dog, and the major word in the predicate, the action, Is walks. Where do we put the word a? Right. Because it's telling us how many dogs or which dog. It's pointing to the dog. Which means that word is going to be on this side. the equation. And so, you remember we just draw a diagonal line and we can put the capital A, because that starts the sentence, A dog walks. Very good. So what we're going to do today is learn a little bit more about what's going on underneath the main line in the diagram sentence. Except instead of just articles such as A, we're going to learn something a bit more complex with the prepositions. Let's think of a preposition. Now remember how we have learned the different prepositions, some of the most common ones. I'm going to list some right here as you call them out. Now remember our trick Everywhere a squirrel goes. So squirrels can go up, down, on, to,
Where else? Bobby. Ian. Sally. Oh, that's good. Put those two together and we have a pawn. Where else? Gladys. To war. Right? Henry. Around. Very good. Okay. Lots more. But this will give us a starting point. So let's use our original sentence and add a prepositional phrase about where the dog is going, sort of like where the squirrel is going. Okay? So where can a dog walk? <laughs> I'm sure you all would love for that to happen, but it's just not going to. We'll have to rely on our gerbil today. Yes, a dog can walk in a school. <laughs> so... So that tells us where the dog is walking, where the dog is, in fact. The dog is in the school, and it's walking in a school. So this, because it starts with a preposition, in, is telling us that we have a prepositional phrase. Prepositional phrase always starts with the preposition. It always ends with a noun. So if you can see that better. There we go. And it may or may not have a uh, an article or an adjective. We could say in a red school or in a high school, in an old school. We could add lots of adjectives. We could change the article to the, walks in the school. Or we could just say in school and not have an article at all. So in this case, we do have an article. And that's our prepositional phrase. A dog walks in a school. So remember that a word that describes one of the words on the main line is going to go underneath the main line. So A describes dog, goes underneath dog. In a school describes walking, where the walking is happening. And so in a school is going to go underneath walks. And the only way that we can get started is with that slanted line. Just like here. But it's going to be a little bit more complicated. We're going to put in just the preposition. But the rest of this, a school, is part of that prepositional phrase. It's not a separate thing. So a and school are going to be attached 
to this word in. And let me show you how to attach them. We're going to put, remember, straight lines that go like this, horizontally or parallel to the main line. These are going to have main words. And what is the main word that has the most meaning in A and school? School, right. In school. Now, A is like this A. A dog, A school. Where did we put the A that goes with a dog? With. Underneath the word it describes. Correct. So, in this case, A is going to go underneath which word? You might think it goes here because this one went under dog. But that's not quite right because A doesn't tell us anything about walking. What does it tell us about? Which thing? School, right? A school. So we're going to take this and move it under the word it describes. And then we can just erase this. A dog walks in a school. And that's how you add a prepositional phrase to a sentence diagram. Now, let's change our sentence just a bit. dog. Let's change this to the dog in the book walks in a school. Do you see any new prepositions in this sentence? Martha? Yes. It's the same one, isn't it? So we know we have another prepositional phrase. Can anyone tell me what the new prepositional phrase is in this sentence? <laughs> okay, you both are right. In the book. In a school. You see how they almost have the same rhythm? In a book, in the school, on a tree, on the floor, on the table, underneath the log, on the ball. It's very easy to start to build prepositional phrases once you remember that most prepositions
can be used to describe everywhere a squirrel goes. Now we do have two exceptions to this. I'm going to tell you those now. For and of don't really tell us direction. They are both prepositions, but they don't really fit with this definition of everywhere a squirrel can go. But that's okay. They both have an F in them. Makes them a little bit easier to remember. For and of. We'll come back to those in just a minute. The dog in the book walks in a school. So where are we going to put this prepositional phrase? Is it going to be above the line or below the line? Right, Amy, it is below the line. Because it's not a main part of the sentence. It's telling us something about the dog. And the dog is the main part. The dog is the subject of the sentence. It's the thing we're talking about. And so anything that tells us more about that subject is going to go underneath that subject. Just like A. Now I change the sentence and turn that A into the, so I will make that change. Put it underneath the word dog as well. And as I said, if we have something that describes a word on the top part of the diagram, we start with an angled line. So in the book, which of those words is going to be on that angled line? Okay, Jesse, this is a little bit tricky. The is already there, which is this one. And you're saying that this the goes there too. Now you're right that it goes underneath the line because it describes the dog, but it's not literally the dog. It's what? the book. So we can't put that the underneath dog. It already has one. Does that make sense? So what's the word that goes on the slanted line? And I'll give you a hint. We see it already in another part of the sentence. Betty, just like we see here in the preposition itself, the preposition, not the prepositional phrase, but the preposition, the words up, down, on, to, in, toward, around, under, through, for, of. All of those words are always going to be the first word in a prepositional phrase in a diagrammed sentence. And then we're going to bring our straight line across. And just like we have a main word, remember main words are on horizontal lines. And the 
I've got the in the book left. So which of those words goes on this horizontal line? Book is the main word out of the in book. And then where does the go in the book? The is describing what? Book. So it's just like the here describes dog. And so the here describes book. The dog in the book walks in a school. And what you can see is that the prepositional phrases are giving you extra information. It's information we don't need to understand the basic sentence, the dog walks. That's the basic sentence. The dog walks. But you don't talk like that, do you? I don't talk like that. We use lots of descriptions and adjectives and adverbs get to that next month, but lots of different words to help us describe the world that we're talking about. And these prepositional phrases in the book, in a school, help us to understand a little bit more about where the walking is happening and where Forget this line right here that separates the subject from the predicate. Okay, so I'm going to make a little bit more room. So we have the dog walks, and a similar sentence would be the dogs walk. So if we change dog to dogs and make it plural. Then we need to change walks to walk and make the verb plural. Dog walks, dogs walk. Well, that's pretty straightforward. I hear most of you using the correct number, singular or plural, in your subject with the correct number, singular or plural, in your verb in the predicate. Things get a little bit harder when we insert extra words in between the subject and the verb. The dog in the book or the dogs in the book. dogs 
in the book Walk in a School. So far you may be wondering why diagramming sentences is so important. It will help you to understand the building blocks of a sentence. Once you understand those, you can build lots of different sentences and you can do so without grammatical mistakes. dogs in the book and then we're going to put a verb right here. The dogs in the book do something in a school. And then we can use the verb that we've been using or if you'd like to try another verb that's fine. But can somebody give me a verb it fits right there in that sentence. Okay, so you want to keep walk. Okay, so is it going to be walks or walk? Okay, Billy, why did you decide on walk? That's some good thinking because book is singular and walks is singular. Now it's, I realize, and I think Billy realizes too, that this is a silly sentence um, because the book isn't walking. But it is a noun and it's a singular noun that is close to the verb. Book walks. Uh, let's think of a different verb for book that makes sense. Um, the book, the book opens. Notice we have the S at the end, right? The book opens. The problem here is that book is not the subject of our sentence. What is? Sally, the dogs, that's right. We have to go all the way to the beginning of the sentence to find the subject that goes with this verb. The reason why Billy may have put an S there is because the word book was the noun that was closest. And it just sounds better. The book walks, the book opens. Singular, singular. But when we learn how to diagram sentences, we realize that book is not the noun, the main noun of the sentence. It's not subject of the sentence. And so in one way we can think of it is in the book, which is our prepositional phrase right here, is like extra information. It's like parentheses. They don't have to tell you that. The dog walks in the school, but if I want to give you some extra information, I might put it in parentheses, or I might put it in a prepositional phrase. And 
that's why we have to kind of forget that the prepositional phrase is even there when we're trying to figure out whether to use a singular or a plural verb. Because this is the word that matters. Dogs. And dogs always walk. It's not dogs walks. Dogs walk. So you can see if you learn how to build a diagram sentence, then when you're talking, when you're writing, you will, in your mind, remember that in the book is underneath the main part of the sentence. It's extra information, like in parentheses. And then the chances of your subject and your verb agreeing in number, and that's what we call it, subject verb agreement. We want to make sure that they agree in number. Is there one or is there more than one? Is there more than one dog? Yes. We don't know how many more, but it's at least two, right? More than one dog is dogs. And walk is a plural verb. Four dogs. If we change this back to dog, the dog walks. Then we make them both singular. We could change book to books and make books plural. The dog in the books. Maybe this is a dog in a, in a book series, like um, the boxcar children books. The dog in the books walks in a school. And again, if we don't pay attention to the structure, we might get confused and think that this is the part we need to make agree. Books walk. But remember, books is not the subject of the sentence. The dog is, and the dogs, the dog walks. The dog walks. Or the dogs walk. It doesn't matter what's going on underneath The main line in a diagram sentence, whatever's going on down there, the subject and the verb need to agree. Book doesn't need to agree with walk. School doesn't need to agree with walk. Okay? The only thing that needs to agree with walk is the subject, dogs. And so, that's the lesson for today. Prepositional phrases go under the main line. That tells you that it's almost like it's extra information in parentheses. And we're not going to consider it when we're trying to figure out what our subject and verb agreement are. sentences on the board. I want you to write them down and diagram them in your notebooks. Okay?
first one is a very hard one because we have something that we talked about briefly yesterday and that is a direct object wears what? What does she wear? Flowers. And you'll have to go back to your notes from yesterday to see what we do with direct objects. I'm just putting this here to see whether or not anything from yesterday is, is still making sense to you. But it's okay if we get it wrong today because I haven't done the lesson on that yet. pool in town collapsed. The good news is the pool in town did not collapse. We're just pretending that it did today. In your third sentence, A hot dog with mustard sits on the table. Now before we get started, does anyone want to point out where our prepositions are? there. That's one. Very good. Right, so this one is on, not in, but it's still a preposition. more. Right here. We haven't talked about this word, but with is a preposition as well. So I just want you to be aware that we have one, two, three, four prepositions in these three sentences. All right, everybody, you may begin your work quietly. If you have a question, please raise your hand. 